Hello and welcome to Walking the Way of the Cross. Over the past 12 episodes we've been tracing Jesus Christ's final hours, pausing each time at a station of the cross. As we've travelled we've met the God who has shared in the darkest, most painful parts of our human experience and who still shares them with us. Now we reach the final station of the way. Jesus has died on the cross and now is laid in the tomb. He is out of sight now and it's the end of this part of the journey. But it's just the beginning of another, the one that began when Christ burst through the other side of death on Easter Day. Before we begin, a few moments to get comfortable, to be still, and maybe take a couple of slow breaths. To be aware of the presence of God with you now. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 15. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. meditation on that passage by Philip North, Bishop of Burnley. It's a tricky decision, one that confronts many families as they plan the funeral of a loved one. When the final prayers of committal are said, should the curtains that surround the coffin at the crematorium chapel be closed or remain open? What will make the grief easier to bear? The coffin disappearing from sight in a gut-wrenching moment of farewell? Or having to walk out of the chapel with your back turned to the coffin that encases the remains of the person you love? We enter into that same ghastly, bitter grief at this station, as the body of Jesus is taken down from the cross and laid in a grave. That rolled stone, so heavy that it would take many men to move it, must have pressed home the reality of the women's loss. Jesus is entombed, out of sight, dead, that precious body now lying cold on a stone slab. And yet, this place of darkness is not really a tomb at all. It is a womb. And in just a few days, new life will burst forth from it with such power and glory that a stone can't possibly get in the way. This place of death is to be the place of resurrection. For those funeral families, the sad truth is that there will always be a limit to the comfort that can be found in plans and arrangements for a final service. It is from this tomb, the place where death itself is destroyed through the power of Jesus Christ that we find hope, hope in death and comfort in grief. May I pray for us. Lord Jesus, 
Lord of life. You who allowed your life to be eclipsed for love of us. Be with all who suffer and die unseen, unaccompanied, hidden from the eyes of the world. Lord Jesus, Lord of love, you say, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Be comfort to all who are dark with grief today and those who cannot attend the funerals of loved ones because of coronavirus precautions. Lord Jesus, Lord of life, laid dead in a dark tomb and yet raised from death to life. Give us the grace to receive the new life you offer to all through your Easter resurrection, that we may be channels of your true life beyond measure to the glory of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.